If your 2003 to 2009 Mercedes E-Class W211 has a parasitic power drain from the right front power seat, you don't have to fix it like I'm going to show you how to do in this video. You could use the workaround that we used for a year, which is to go into the side fuse panel and pull out this fuse with the white plastic housing around it. This fuse belongs to the right front power seat and the yellow fuse belongs to the left driver's side power seat. So if you pull out this fuse, it stops the parasitic power drain. You can just keep the fuse in the box and then shove it back in anytime you need to adjust the seat and pull it back out again as a quick fix. But here's the much better solution. This is our beautiful W211 Mercedes E500 uh, 2003 and it has a parasitic power drain which I chased using YouTube videos and isolated to the right front power seat and then watching more YouTube videos found out how to figure out the amp draw without blowing up my car and how to eliminate the amp draw and so I just wanted to show you the results of using all of the other YouTube information on my specific problem so I want to say in advance that I have plagiarized all this information from other great people. I'm grateful to all their stuff and I simply want to pay it back by putting it together for anybody who has a Mercedes of this vintage who wants to see how this worked out. So I have used other YouTube videos to figure out how to attach my multimeter in series with my battery and determine the amount of amp draw that I have. So right now I'm drawing about two amps from my power seat even though the car is off. This will drain my car in about two days. And so I have closed all the doors per the other YouTube videos, uh, made sure the car is asleep and connected everything in a way that allows the multimeter to be in series with the negative side of the battery cable. When you first put the multimeter in series with the negative cable and the battery, the voltage, sorry, the amp draw jumps all over the place. And I'm taking a little bit of a risk here because you can see I have it set to a 10 amp setting and the amperage runs above 10 amps at some points. But after about three minutes, this settles down because at first the car is waking up and getting ready for you to get in. You see it already dropped right there um, to about a five amp draw. And after it recognizes that you're not going to need all the auxiliary systems that woke up, it settles down to about 3 amps. And then eventually, after about 5 minutes, down to the 2 amp draw that you saw coming through the power seat module. Next, I used another YouTube video to see how to take the front passenger seat out because it's very hard to reach the cables you have to deal with unless you remove it. So I unbolted the bolts from the rear and from the front. They look like this. And the inside torque socket that you need looks like this. It says it is a E12. This is the underside of the power seat tipped up because I removed the bolts in the front and the back. I'm sorry for how dirty it is underneath there. It's my daughter's car. This is the power seat plug. And there's another excellent video on YouTube that shows that if I can splice together the red and green wire with the switch power wire to its right, with this pink wire being the ground, that I'll be able to eliminate the power draw that is constant, which I think they said is associated with the memory seats and keeping track of the seat position when the car is off. This should still allow the seat to be adjusted when the car is turned on, but when the car is switched off, the seat will be stuck. I'm willing to put up with that in order to keep from having to replace this entire module. So you remove this connector by pinching on the left side and pulling it out. And if this is really the problem, then the voltage drop at the trunk ought to have decreased. The power seat disconnected back at the same setup in the trunk. You see that the drain on my amp meter fell from a little over two to about an eighth of an amp. So it looks like this is in fact the problem and I'm not going to just be cutting and splicing wires for no reason. So I peeled back the insulation around the back and I'm going to cut this wire 
in order to break the constant power drain. And then we're gonna connect this wire with a electrical splice that looks like this. I'm gonna put that on both of these wires and that's gonna send power that comes in along the switched power line to the constant power line as long as the key is on. So the power is coming in this line and going to the seat. We're gonna cut it so it no longer gets power when the key is off, but then the power will come in this line and jump to the red line and go to the seat as long as the switch power is supplied. So I'm gonna put the wire tap onto one side with the switch power and on the other side with the constant power. And then I'm gonna cut the switch, sorry, the constant power right above that moment of truth. And now I'm gonna place a cap on the switch power just to be clean about it. And then press this metal blade down with my wire crimpers so that it connects both the wires through that jumper. Close it all up. Okay, I crimped that little connector on to the cut piece of the constant power wire just so it doesn't ever come in contact with any other wires. I'm gonna slide the splice so that it covers up the cut end of the wire also to protect it from ever coming into contact with other wires. And then I'm gonna take the pliers and bite that blade down so that it now crosses between both wires. So you can see it bit into both the constant and the switch power, basically connecting them as one. Anytime the switch power comes on, it'll send power down to the power seat through the red and green cable. Then I fold this over, pinch it closed tight, and then see if it works. So just to verify that the connection is good between the two wires, I set my ohm meter to ohms on a low scale, check my probes, and they're reading almost no resistance. So if I take one probe and attach it to the constant power wire and one to the other wire that's switched, you see the resistance drops to zero, which means that there is a connection between the two power leads on this connector where there previously was not. So I have reasonable confidence that at least the connection is solid and we'll see if it works out or not. So once I close up the connector, this is how everything looks when it's finished. I'm gonna put some electrical tape around it just so that it doesn't get tangled up with anything that gets shoved under the seat. And then I'll put it back together and test it. With the wires taped up and plugged back into the power seat module, Everything looks like that. It's not gorgeous, but it is so far very effective. Now I'm going to test the seat and see how it behaves with the key on and off. While I taped up the wiring harness, I let the car settle down with all the door latches set. And you see that now it has fallen to about an eighth of an amp total draw when the car is resting compared to over two amps before the wire splice was complete. First I disconnected the multimeter from the negative cable of my battery so it's no longer in series with the electrical system so that it doesn't push more than 10 amps through it when I test out the seat. So right now I have the key off and the seat module connected back to the wiring harness and as expected the seat doesn't have any effect when the key is off because we disconnected that power. But if we turn the key to the second position, now the power should be running to the power seat. And as hoped, it is controlled by the door actuator as expected. So it looks like we've been able to reduce the power draw from two amps down to about an eighth of an amp. And we still maintain full functionality of the seat as long as the key is turned on. Okay, everything's back together. The power seat 
adjustment works perfectly on both halves. So I hope that helps with your car.